Bhagavate Vasudevaya Nacho 
submissive and real. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is said that one should receive the teaching of Lord Chaitanya with intellect and full senses so that one can logically understand the great mission. In the impure state of a living being, the various senses are fully engaged in mundane affairs. If the ear is not engaged in the service of the Lord by hearing about him from Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, certainly the holes of the ears will be filled with some, with some rubbish. Therefore, the messages of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam should be preached all over the world very loudly. That is the duty of a pure devotee who has actually heard about them from the perfect sources. Many want to speak something to others, but because they are not trained to speak on the subject matter of Vedic wisdom, they are all speaking nonsense and people are receiving them with no sense. There are hundreds and thousands of sources for distributing mundane news of the world and people of the world are also receiving it. Similarly, the people of the world should be taught to hear the transcendental topics of the Lord and the devotees of the Lord must speak loudly so that they can hear. The frogs loudly croak with the result that they invite the snakes to eat them. The human tongue is especially given for chanting the holy hymns, the Vedic hymns, and not for croaking like frogs. The word asati is used in this verse is also significant. Asati means a woman who has become a prostitute. A prostitute has no reputation for good womanly qualities. Similarly, the tongue which is given to the human being for chanting the Vedic hymns will be considered a prostitute when engaged in chanting some mundane nonsense. Om Ajnana Timurandasya Kyananjana Shavakaya Sakshurumilikalina Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Vanchatapata Lubyascha Kripasindu Vayetha Padikana Pavanityo Vaishna Vibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Vedadha Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 So these words were spoken by Shunakarishi in the forest of Nanasharanya at the beginning of the Kali Yuga or just prior to, the, to Kali Yuga. Shunakarishi had come there along with all the sages because they knew the Kali Yuga was going to begin and they knew the nature of the Kali Yuga. They knew that he knew that Kali Yuga was a time of irreligiosity. So Sonika Rishi is the head of all of the sages, thousands of sages actually came there and they performed yajna for the benefit of the world and at the same time they also desired to hear about the glories of the Lord. So Sonika Rishi is addressing Sutta Goswami and he's asking Sutta Goswami to speak about the glories of the Lord and he's describing 
those unfortunate souls who don't hear about the glories of the Lord. He says that uh, their ears are like the holes of a snake. The holes of a snake. Our ears are like that, just like in the field sometimes the rats will build holes. The, the, the rat will make a hole in the field where he lives. And then the snake will come and he will eat the rat and he will live in the hole. So like that, the snake enters our ears. If we don't hear the glories of the Lord, then the snake of death enters into the ears. As we heard previously, uh, that one who is engaged in chanting the glories of the Lord, and then they're not under the laws of nature, that they, that they, they can live without fear of death. They're not fearful. Material world, materialistic people are all fearful about death. But for one who is engaged in chanting of the glories of the Lord, there is no fear. He's not worried. He has no fear about death because he's engaged in the service of the Lord, so he knows at the end of life he will continue to serve the Lord. He will go on and serve the Lord some other place. So, if the ears are not used to hear about the message of Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita, then our ears will be occupied by something like a snake which comes in snakes are not very pleasant creatures to have around, you know, if there's snakes somewhere, we think, kill it, <laughs> get rid of it. Actually, it's even said in the, in the Shastra that if there's a snake, you can kill it, because snakes are envious creatures and uh, they give trouble to innocent people. Snakes are envious because snakes don't have any legs. So they see other living entities with legs. So they, they don't like them. They give, they'll come and bite them, give trouble to them. So this is the nature of the snake. So it said if there's a snake, you can kill it without fear, without any sinful reaction because the snakes are harmful creatures to have around. So the ear holes become occupied, they become like the hole of a snake, because they become filled with all kinds of rubbish, sound vibrations. The rubbish songs, popular music, and uh, Gramya Kata, the talk of the village, Right? There are two kinds of kata. There is the Gramya kata and the Krishna kata. So Gramya kata is the talk of the village. Just like in a village, people will talk about different things. They will gossip. So that talking, that is considered useless talk, rubbish talk, because it simply causes nonsense thought. From nonsense talk comes nonsense thought. And with nonsense thought then comes nonsense action. And with nonsense action then comes again birth and death. You stay in the material world. You cannot get free from the material world if we are doing nonsense activities. If the ears are busy with hearing all nonsense, then it will keep us in the material bondage. So we have to use the ears, but the problem is the ears cannot be closed. Huh? Not, the ears are, you know, we can close the eyes, we don't want to see something, we close the eyes, but for the ears, they're always open, they're always there, they're always hearing. So you have to be very conscious 
about what we hear. Just like the holy name. We hear the holy name and we may think, oh, this is very good, but we have to be also careful where we hear the holy name from. Because if you hear the holy name from the wrong source, then it is like milk which is touched by the lips of the snake, right? If a snake will touch the milk, then the milk has a poisonous effect. In the same way, if we hear the holy name from the wrong source, it will have a poisonous effect. So we have, we have to be selective where we hear, who we hear from. We want to hear, but we want to hear from the right source. We want to get the proper benefit of hearing. So, this requires intelligence, discrimination. Intelligence is the ability to discriminate, to know where to hear, what to hear. There is always some sound, the sounds of cars, this morning we could hear the sound of the frogs, the croaking of the frogs with all the heavy rain yesterday. So this morning we could hear the frogs croaking. Maybe it used to be a rice field here or something. Uh, and certainly where the rice is, then you'd hear a lot of frogs. So we hear the sound of the frogs but we're not the only ones to hear the sound of the frog. The snake also hears the sound of the frog. And the snake knows, oh, there's my food, there's my breakfast, or there's my supper, or whatever. And the frog will go, uh, the, rather the snake will go, led by the sound of the croaking of the frog, and the snake will eat the frog. So, that is the result of the croaking of the frog. The croaking of the frog simply brought death. It didn't do it any good. The frog was enjoying croaking. After the rain, the frog is happy and he's croaking. But that croaking is simply bringing death for him. So, so this way Sonika Rishi is telling, we have to use the ears and we have to use the tongue. But we have to use them in the proper manner. We have to use them for the glorification of the Lord. We have to hear. We have to hear about Krishna. We have to hear from the proper source. Not just only hearing the scriptures, but hearing them from the proper source. Because there are many people also speaking Bhagavad Gita, but they're not speaking the Bhagavad Gita in the proper manner. They're presenting some other edition, some other version, or they use even the Bhagavad Gita to present their own message. They will take Krishna's book, but they will not give Krishna's message. They will give their own message. So this is not chaste. The word Prabhupada said, asati. Sati means chaste. Just like sati. Sati, uh, there's... Sati. It's the name of... Means, means a chaste. A chastity is a very important quality for a woman. And for when a woman is not chaste, then it means she's very bad character. So this word is used to describe the ear and the tongue. That we want the ear and the tongue also to be chaste. That we should only hear about Krishna. Just like there was the one devotee, he was a, he was, his name was Vamsi Das Babaji. So he was very careful about what he would hear. He was a Babaji. 
So the Babaji's, they only do bhajan. They don't preach, but they will do their bhajan. They will chant and they will read the scriptures, but they don't preach. So sometimes people would come to him and they would talk. Like one day one man came to him and said, Oh Babaji, what do you think of the government? And he, he said, Govardhan? <laughs> he, did, he didn't hear government. He only heard Govardhan. At least uh, the man was saying government, but he didn't want to speak about the government. He wanted to speak about Krishna. So he didn't say government, he said Govardhan. So two words similar, but meaning is very different. So in this way he avoided speaking about mundane politics. What could we say good about governments anywhere in the world? It is all mundane politics. There's nothing very good coming from it. And better not to discuss it. But if we will discuss Govardhan, if we will discuss the Leela of Govardhan, and the glory of Govardhan and how Govardhan is Haridasa Varya. Govardhan is the best of all the devotees of Lord Hari. Then that will be much better for us to hear about the glories of Govardhan and how Govardhan does so much service for Lord Krishna. How the Govardhan is the best of all the devotees because Govardhan is providing grass for the cows and water for all the people as well as the cows. Govardhan produces many flowers and fruits and there are roots also growing on the Govardhan hill. And the stones of Govardhan are very cooling in the, in the hot summer and they're very warm in the cold winter. And Govardhan provides nice places for the pastimes of Lord Krishna, places where, like there are caves on the mountain where Krishna can go and be with the, the cowherd boys, he can take relief from the scorching heat or from the rain by going in the cave. And there's also gully where the gopis will pass and at that time Krishna will perform the pastime of taking taxis like Dana Kili, the Dana Kili pastime where Krishna becomes a tax collector and the gopis are going to market with all the butter and yogurt and Krishna says, well I'm, the, I'm in charge of this path. You want to go this way, you have to pay taxis to me. So all of these different places are there on the Govardhan Hill. In this way, there's so much uh, nice things to talk about Govardhan Hill. But talk about governments, there's nothing nice, nothing very good, nothing very pleasant. And nothing of benefit from us in talking about governments. But if we hear about Govardhan, that is beneficial for us. Because by hearing about Krishna means we will no longer have to worry about birth and death. Our mind will be brought to Krishna. So it's important for us to hear Srinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. Simply by hearing topics of Krishna, it is a pious activity. It cleanses the heart of all the material desires. Lord Krishna, the Super Soul, within the hearts of all living entities, cleanses the desire for material enjoyment from those who relish this message. So when we take pleasure in hearing topics of Krishna, that takes away all of our material desires. Material desires become insignificant because we become absorbed in hearing about Lord Krishna and about his pastimes.
So there is the benefit of hearing. We have to hear, but we have to hear regularly. It's not just like, oh, I will hear and then finish. Now I heard, so it's done. We have to hear regularly because this hearing, this is like medicine for the disease of conditioned life. When you take the medicine, you don't just take it one time. And we have a chronic disease, we have a bad disease. So you have to take more medicine because we have the heavy disease. We've had it, we've had the disease for a long time because we are conditioned souls. We are nitya badas. We're not nitya muktas. We're nitya badas. We're eternally conditioned. And so we need to take medicine for a long time to get over that conditioning. And that medicine is to hear, to hear regularly. And not only hearing, but also chanting. So use the ears to hear and the tongue to chant. We use the tongue to chant, to chant the holy name and to chant the pastimes and the qualities and describe the form of Krishna. This is the proper way to use the tongue and the ears. This makes them chaste. That we should be chaste in the service of Lord Krishna. There was one disciple of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called Makunda. And Makunda, he was a, a very dear devotee of Lord Chaitanya. But sometimes he would go to other places. He would go and hear from other people. So Lord Chaitanya wanted to punish him for this because he was always going with different places and he would go and associate with Maya bodies and hear from different other groups and he would hear different things. So Lord Chaitanya said he didn't want to see that Makunda. He said, I don't want to see Makunda again. Tell him not to come. I don't want to see him again. So Makunda was very disappointed because he was very attached to Lord Chaitanya. So he asked the, he asked the devotees, ask Lord Chaitanya, will I ever be able to meet him again in the future? Will he ever allow me to meet him? So they came and they asked Lord Chaitanya, Makunda wants to know, in the future, will you ever meet him again? And Lord Chaitanya told them, he said, you tell him, I will meet him after a thousand births, after one thousand lifetimes. And so they went and they told Makunda, Lord Chaitanya said, he will meet you after one thousand births. And when Makunda heard it, he said, oh, Haribo, oh, very good. Again, I will be able to meet Lord Chaitanya. And he was so happy. So they told Lord Chaitanya how Makunda was very joyful to hear that in the future he would again be able to meet with Lord Chaitanya. So when Lord Chaitanya heard this, then he said, all right, bring him here. And Lord Chaitanya forgave him. But he also instructed him. He said, don't go here and there. Don't just go here and there and hear from everyone. Be chaste. Right? This is the point in the, this word asati. means one who is not chaste. So if you're not chaste, it's a bad quality to be unchaste. So we, we should be chaste and we should make our tongue and our ear chaste. And we shouldn't go here and there, and we shouldn't hear the mundane things of the material world. We want to keep ourselves always in 
Krishna consciousness. And the way to keep herself in Krishna consciousness is by always chanting the glories of the Lord. Satatam kirtayanto mam yatantas chadradavrata namasyantas chamam natya nijayutas gauchati Always chanting my glories, endeavoring with determination. These great souls perpetually worship me with devotion. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes devotees in this way, that they're always chanting the glories of the Lord. And in the Shikshastika, we're also praying, Kirtaniya Sadahari, always chant the holy name. Lord Chaitanya has given us this verse in the Shikshastika, right, the third verse that one should be tolerant like a tree and without any sense of false prestige, offer all respects to others and don't be anxious to get any respect for yourself and in this way always chant the holy name. So kirtaniya sadahari, that is how we can keep ourselves chaste, by always chanting. And chanting is not only chanting the Maha Mantra, but chanting the glories of Krishna, telling people about Krishna. Lord Chaitanya told the Brahmana from Kurma Chitra, Yari Deki Tari Kaho Krishna Upadesh. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna Upadesh. Upadesh, the teachings of Krishna. So that is how we can make ourselves chaste, how we can make the tongue chaste. And to keep the ears chaste, we need to constantly chant. We have, therefore, we're so fortunate, we have wonderful songs to chant the names of Krishna. Just like we were singing Vibhavari Shesha, and in the evening, we were singing Yashomati Nandana, all different names of Krishna. By singing these songs, we can be hearing the holy name of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya went through the forest of Jarakanda, right? The wild animals were there. What did Lord Chaitanya do when he was going through the forest? What was he chanting? He went through the Jarakhand forest, but he beat the Jarakhand. You know Jarakhand? Bihar. It used to be Bihar. No? They made two states. They made Bihar and Jarakhand. So forest, jungle is there. We have temple there. We have the place. Kanaina Sala. Kanaina Sala. It said Krishna comes. When Krishna disappears from Rasalila and Braj, he comes to Kanaina Sala and he dances there. It's a very special place on the bank of the Ganges. But it's very remote area, jungle. People are all very poor there. We, we, we had a guest, we have a guest house there. People came in the night in the boat. They stole all the furniture. <laughs> They took all the furniture from every room, <laughs> put it all in the boat and went away. <laughs> so they didn't buy any more furniture. <laughs> but it, it's a very amazing place too. So it's in Jarakam. Lord Chaitanya was going through the forest. There were wild animals, tigers, different creatures. Lord Chaitanya was chanting, Krishna, 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 hey. Yeah, do you know that song? We sing that song. Lord Chaitanya was singing, Krishna, 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 and then, Rama, Raghava, 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 Rama,
Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava Pahima. This way, chanting the names of Krishna constantly. And the wild animals, they heard the holy name. They all became gentle. And the tiger became gentle and embraced the deer. Usually the tiger will eat the deer. But because Lord Chaitanya was chanting the holy name, the tiger embraced the deer. The, so the ferocious animals, they became gentle by the chanting of the holy names of Krishna. This is the effect when we hear spiritual sound vibration, the holy name. The holy name comes Golokera Primadan Harinam Sankirtan. The holy name descends from Goloka, from the spiritual world. It is not an ordinary name. So spiritual potency is there in the holy name because Lord Chaitanya was chanting. Of course, we cannot imitate. Don't go and try to imitate Lord Chaitanya. You may get eaten by the tiger. <laughs> So, anyway, chanting the holy name, Vedva, different sounds, sound vibrations have different effects. They did an experiment, they, they played different kinds of music. One kind of music, gentle, soft music, and the flowers blo bloomed very nicely. But when they played other music, which was very harsh and noisy, you know, maybe like rock or something, you know, the, the flowers all wilted and dried up. So it shows that the different plants, they have also consciousness and they're affected by sound. People, you know, we also become affected by too much sound. If you have to live near a highway, and there's constant sound of traffic all the time. The motorbikes going zoom, zoom, zoom. You know, if you have to live beside that and hear that noise every day, you know, it's not very good for the brain. Different sounds affect us. But if we hear the holy name, <laughs> chanting, just like we have Prabhupada's chanting book, if we hear Prabhupada chanting, that has a different effect. So different sounds have different effects on us. We want to hear the transcendental sound, and that has the nice effect. Other sounds, you know, sound of machines, and so on, just wear the brain out don't do any good for us. So, we don't want to be, we don't want to be, have ears like the hopes of a snake or a tongue like the tongue of a frog. We want to use the tongue to chant the holy name of Krishna and the ears to hear the glories of Krishna. Okay, any question? Any question, Prabhu? Maharaj, <laughs> <laughs> she talked about transcendence of sound. How does that translate into the transcendence of diet or transcendence of food? Yes, it's the same, of course, with food. We eat food which is offered to Krishna as prasada, transcendental food has a very different effect. We eat food offered to Krishna, it purifies the mind and consciousness. But we eat food which is not offered, which is not, which is maybe even being 
own uh, impure commodity, then it will contaminate the consciousness more. It will make it more... Even you eat food which is prepared by materialistic people, it will affect our consciousness. If the food is prepared by people who are not devotees, and you eat their food, then that consciousness which they have will be in the food. Just like we said the other day, you eat food, you know, during the COVID time, if somebody's got the COVID and they cook food for you, then you eat the food, then you can get the COVID. It goes through the food. The disease can go into the food. So it happens in a subtle manner, in a subtle manner, the same way the consciousness of the person who's cooking is very important. You, you, you have to get food which is prepared. I, it should people who cook, they, they should be Brahmins or they should be in the mode of goodness. If we eat food cooked by non-devotees, then it will have a, it will not be good for us. So the Krishna consciousness movement, you know, we have a standard like that. The people cooking, they have to be following regulative principles. If they're not strictly following, and if they cook, then the consciousness will be there in the food, and it will affect people. So when we have Rathyatra, we had prasadam, we had nice sweets and different things prepared and we distributed them to people because, you know, just giving people a little prasadam, even a tiny piece of prasadam, it's very powerful. It can purify the consciousness. Narada Muni, in his previous life, he was the son of a maidservant and it happened that some sadhus came and stayed at their home. So Narada Muni was a young boy and he would go there and serve them. And by serving them, they blessed him. And the result was the next life he became Narada Muni. He became the son of Brahma and he became the great authority in devotional service. So that was the result of his association with sadhus. Although he was a young boy, because he was a good boy, he was behaved. He didn't do any nonsense. He didn't play any nonsense games. And he tried to peer. So he got the blessings from these sadhus. And he became a great devotee. So we have to take advantage. Everything, you know, taking prasadam. We don't just eat prasadam, we honor prasadam. It is spiritual food. And if we honor the prasadam and the right consciousness, then we can certainly get a lot of purification just by honoring prasanna. So when we distribute prasanna, at that time we like to chant Hare Krishna. Just like when we were giving prasanna out at Atriyatra, we had kirtan. So people were hearing the holy name and we were giving prasanna. So yes, it's transcendental food. Everything can become transcendental in Krishna consciousness. Using computers, 
it also becomes transcendental in the service of Krishna to broadcast Krishna consciousness. The microphone becomes transcendental by using it in the service of Krishna. So everything depends on the consciousness, the attitude by which we do things. So cooking and eating also, we want to have the right consciousness, the right mood. Right, Prabhu? Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai.